Brotherhood, multiplication, restoration. We are Sin Network. We're a family, planting churches together. Join us as we hear from leaders of this movement from across North America and discover what it really takes to plant churches everywhere for everyone. Today we're talking with Chip Dodd, founder of Sage Hill Counseling Center, about how overcoming our trauma helps us become compassionate to others. Chip, you know, in 2016, when President Trump was elected, mm -hmm. you know, I remember being on, you know, just looking at the, you know, channel surfing, going to Fox, CNN, CNBC, going on all these different stations, you know, and these stations can't agree on anything, <laughs> you know, but that night they agreed on one thing. They said, our country is divided. Mm -hmm. Our country is divided. Our country is divided. And I kept hearing that over and over again. And then, you know, I started thinking about my church. I thought I was thinking about Blueprint. And I just remember just thinking about, man, our church is divided. Because we had people at our church that voted for President Trump. Mm -hmm. And we have people in our church that, that think that if you voted for President Trump, you're the devil. Mm -hmm. Right? And really these two worlds, and this is during the time where, you know, with all... Black lives matter, blue lives matter, or white lives matter, all mm -hmm. lives matter. So all these tensions. And so we was like, we need to address this. We talked about it. And I remember getting our church together and talking to one another and, you know, and dividing them up and just saying, and just the tension. And one of the things that I recognized in that was th when we're talking about race, we're talking about issues of trauma. Yes. traumatic things that we yep. can't really even talk about race yeah. because this is so emotionally, you know, just traumatic, you know, this, mm -hmm. that's coming from it, that we got to first deal with our emotions. And that was one of the things that led me to, you know, preaching on a series called 18 Inches, which was basically preaching kind of the eight emotions, taking you the 18 inches from your head to your heart. Mm -hmm. and, and that really helped so much yeah. for us. Why do you think even, what is the role of emotions when in dealing with traumatic events? That, that's, that, that, that's a great question. But I want to say first that the very fact that you could step into that with the congregation and walk all the way through the tension and get a result that brought fellowship is pretty significant, mm -hmm. would you yeah, not say? Yeah. I mean, it was mm -hmm. like, it's, it's like whew, how many people would avoid it, how many people wouldn't step into it, and how many people would step into it, and what happens is massive reaction mm -hmm. instead of truthful response. Yeah. And that's the that kind of begins mm -hmm. to answer what you're asking, the response versus reaction. Because yeah. what, what trauma is, and it, it gets massively underestimated in terms of w what it is and its power. Because we always think of trauma as earthquake, war, rape. Mm -hmm. uh, all true. Yeah. All true. Yeah. Um, but what trauma really is, is, is when a human being, especially in their upbringing, the kind that you're talking about, people get real reactive, in your upbringing, if you experience things that take away the voice of the heart mm -hmm. because your capacity to say them is silenced by a power over you, okay? Mm -hmm. And that can, it, it, which is, it, which of course has to do with race, has to do with culture, has to do with socioeconomic position, education, uh, regions. I mean, it's just, it, it's like life happening uh, for some groups more than others. But the thing is, wherever you wound up ha being helpless, then your voice of the heart gets frozen mm -hmm. because your feelings are your enemy instead of your feelings being a way to find connection. Because mm -hmm. if you're in trauma, there's nobody listening. Yeah. Now, what's amazing about trauma, and, and this is, this is, is so practical. When, when a person gets hurt, just very practical, when a person gets hurt and they're bleeding, say a cut mm -hmm. or a, a broken bone, it, if that wound is not attended to and brought back to full functioning, it will still heal but it, it, it heals with excessive scar tissue mm -hmm. or the bone heals with where the person's like, it still uh, has calcification all around it. And that's how trauma, what trauma does to us, mm -hmm. it creates scar tissue. And it's not so much what happened to a person that traumatizes them, it's what happens inside them that decides what the, the impact of the trauma mm -hmm. is. If a person gets healing, the trauma's resolved. 
Can you explain that? Explain that. What do you mean by yeah, that? Like, like when, when a person is rendered helpless, they're, they're in loneliness, fear, sadness. Mm-hmm. They're in grief. They're in anger. They're in, they're in hurt. They're in shame. They feel ashamed because they couldn't stop uh, themselves from being helpless. So the only person to blame is themselves. Mm-hmm. Because if you blame the one who did it, you got more 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 helplessness. Okay. So 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 when when this wound occurs, the scar tissue is what uh, covers up the feelings. Mm-hmm. It covers up the normal healing, normal yeah. functioning. And we know that scar tissue does two things: it numbs the spot that was wounded, mm-hmm. and it makes a person inflexible. Mm-hmm. So trauma numbs the heart. Man and makes the heart inflexible, mm-hmm. makes our thinking inflexible. Because we read everything around us as the same thing potentially happening again. Mm-hmm. So my trauma makes a person make sure they never get wounded again yeah. instead of revealing their hearts with the possibility that a wound could occur. And what you did in your church that day, people took the risk through your them trusting, hoping, trusting God, and also you had been teaching the 18 inches. Mm-hmm. These people knew the language of being able to live fully in a tragic place. They knew the language of feel your feelings, tell the truth, and just give it to the process. God owns mm-hmm. the process. My job is to respond to life, not react against it. Mm-hmm. So these people were telling the truth instead of acting based upon the actions of others. Yeah. That's what traumatized people yeah. do. They they take action based upon the actions of others. So. You, you talked about trauma brings about numbness yes. and inflexibility. Uh-huh. When you're dealing with traumatic issues like that, how does that personify itself, you know, in these yes. in these types of conversations yeah. where there seems yeah. like there's a lot of impasse? Yeah, so re- reactivity like that, when a person anticipates that they're going to be rendered uh, helpless, rendered vulnerable, exposed to m- more pain, the, 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 literally the uh, nervous system kicks on and you, it, you, it turns on fight, flight, freeze, mm-hmm. or appease, mm-hmm. which is reactivity. Because anxiety, that's anxiety reaction. Anxiety is all about making sure that I'm never rendered helpless and so I'm looking for the enemy all the time. Mm-hmm. So it, it's fighting. It's like deciding like because you look a certain way, you're this way, Mm -hmm. and therefore we're already anxious and defensive before we even get up up close Mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. We've already decided what it's gonna be like. And so uh, reactivity is assessing the present based upon my experiences of the past that are unresolved. Mm -hmm. That's the inflexibility and the numbness. And reactivity is a way of not having to feel. Mm -hmm. Because we see, see, people people think that, that feelings are resentment and rage and uh, uh, apathy and depression and anxiety. We think those are feelings. Those aren't feelings. Those are reactions against having to feel. Mm. So when a person gets hurt, either they get healing and, and, and the bone gets set, the wound gets healed, and they come back to full functioning, right? Mm-hmm. Or to protect themselves and have more hurt, they become resentful. It's like, hey, you know, I'm gonna make you pay for the pain I have. Yeah. So, and yeah. then it leads to vengefulness, and then it leads to isolation, and then it leads to fighting all the time. So what's the difference between reactivity? Like, what's the, how are we to respond? If yeah. we know that I'm dealing with a traumatic event and, and it does bring about in, in a certain types of emotions, what am yeah. I supposed to do with them? Yeah, so the, 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 it, it, amazingly, the healing for trauma is the counterintuitive, opposite of what we think will fix us. Mm. It's doing the very thing we're running from. Mm. The healing for trauma, because trauma is a feeling sickness, it's a feeling uh, numbness, it's a feeling uh, inflexibility. So we have to go back and do the very thing that we are pretty sure will get us killed yeah. and say what we feel. Yeah. Tell the truth about where you were, what happened, and where you are now. And you're not just talking about recapping history. You're talking about how does that history make you feel? Yes. But but why would I want to do that? That would empower you. If I said, you make me angry. Yeah. I've just empowered you to say, you can make me angry. And I've empowered you. I don't want you to have that type of power. Exactly. Like, you just hurt me. Yes. I'd rather not tell you that. Yes. And then just figure out another way. Like, why why would I want to do that? And then you stay the same. And so do I. Yeah. So if you take the risk, and this is not just with the public, 
This is with people you want to be in relationship with or need to be in relationship with or or call to be in relationship with, you know? Mm -hmm. But when you say, I feel hurt, I feel hurt by what you said. I feel hurt by how you looked at me a certain way. So you're giving me opportunity. You're challenging me. You're actually saying, uh, I want to be in relationship with you, but I can't be unless you're capable of doing the same thing I'm doing feeling your feelings, telling the truth, and showing up. Because if we can't connect, we can't be in relationship. Mm -hmm. So uh, crazy as it sounds, the person who's taking the risk is the one who has the strength. Mm -hmm. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Because uh, I'm challenging you to show up in heart. But I have to to have a a courage about that. I've got to have a fellowship behind me Mm -hmm. that I can go to when the world kicks me in the face again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but we're, we're created for relationship. We're created to find fulfillment in relationship. And wherever there's trauma and the division that follows, there's isolation, there's friction, there's revenge seeking, there's people making payments mm-hmm. against it, there's, there's uh, uh, exclusivity, there's, uh, you know, uh, uh, like uh, 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 unhealthy tribe mm-hmm. togetherness. Mm-hmm. There's... Uh, uh, closed communities. So, what do know. we do with what do we do with the trauma when we come? Like, you know, my parents are growing up. You know, are people who are dealing with traumatic childhoods, and then they come and they just know. My, I, I desire to have a relationship. Yeah. I believe in what you're yeah. saying. I'm willing to be vulnerable. Yeah, so then, the, but it, I'm yeah. going to be left to numbness. Yeah. So, so what the question ends up being? Uh, uh, what are you willing to do to have what you seek? Are you willing to feel? Yeah. Are you willing to tell the truth about what happened? What if I'm willing to feel, but the other person I'm confessing that is not willing to feel? Yeah, it's like that's where you're kind of stuck. See, that's what it, it's, it's amazing. It's like for trauma to heal, the person who has the trauma is willing to tell the truth because they want healing. Mm-hmm. They want to, to get out of the coffin mm-hmm. of inflexibility and the numbness of, of a calloused heart, yeah. right? It's like, I want to live, because yeah. we're made to want to live. So the person has to take a risk, but you're made to take a risk with somebody who knows the experience of pain, trauma, uh, 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 life itself, too. So, but if if the other person is unwilling to, is my numbness and inflexibility tied to that person's response, you know? If, is that- it, 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 that's a great question, because if, if, if your inflexibility and numbness is tied to that other person's actions, mm-hmm. then they own you. Mm-hmm. Trauma sets you free. Mm-hmm. I mean, re- healing from trauma sets you free. Sure. Free to have the courage to say the truth, free to take the risk of speaking into where the trauma comes from and giving opportunity for there to be this thing called uh, we're made to be together. Mm -hmm. Reconciliation means to meet again. I mean, I've seen stuff over the years that uh, you would believe, but for uh, fathers and sons and and mothers and daughters and families and old friends and and people from such disparity of differences, cultural differences, find fellowship uh, like a love fellowship that uh, they've never had at home. Mm -hmm. They've never had it with their kin folks. They've never had with their friends. Um, you know, and, and, and there's this old movie with um, Mel Gibson called uh, We Were Soldiers. And it, it, he was said that when you go into uh, giving yourself to something that matters, in this case, they were talking about war. Mm-hmm. When you go and you give yourself to something that you volunteered to participate in, that means you're not going to care uh, what color mm-hmm. the man is standing beside you or where he came mm-hmm. from or what his upbringing was or what his education was or how much money he has. What you want to know is, are you going to show up with me in this? Yeah. And then Mel Gibson, and he's a colonel, but it's not, you know, he said, he said, I promise you this for those of you who are risking, who are investing your hearts, your hands and your heads into this, that I will make sure you come home. Mm-hmm. You may not come home alive, but You'll come home. I'll be the first one to set foot on the battlefield and the last one to come off. It's like, whew. God mm-hmm. has created us to be moved by those words. Yeah. 
And trauma separates us from being able to be moved into doing things greater than we can do apart. Yeah. Trauma is the divider. You have a quote, you talk about passion, you know, and the passion is mm -hmm. a willingness to endure the pain mm -hmm. for something that's greater than the pain. Yeah. People who have been gripped with trauma, you know, mm -hmm. and I think we all have and to some degree. Sure. We have been gripped with the trauma. And now I'm like, I no longer want this trauma. I no longer want to deal, but I, yeah, I know live that again. I want to live again, but I know that I'm taking it to places that that's, that's been their impairment. That's just, yeah. their, that's just how they have coped with yeah. life. Yeah. And they're not willing to meet me and even acknowledge the damage, acknowledge yeah. the, the trauma um, that, that- So that's that either traumatizing said. again, and it's time to stop it. It's time to stop going there. Yeah. You can't make you can't make a person make a thing. You can't make the world different, but we can grieve the difference it won't won't be. Yeah. So especially with friends, families, uh, groups of people, you you say I, I'm feeling this way, I'm hurting this way, I'm aching this way, and it, it goes to deaf ears and blind eyes. Then you will literally have to go grieve. Mm -hmm. You will have to go uh, find a solace in community of like believers. And then through that strength, now this is what's wild, we are actually able to develop compassion for the very people who have been our enemies mm -hmm. yeah. through trauma healing. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, uh, hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Traumatized people traumatize other people. So if pass it on. If a person is saying, I'd rather I'm not gonna play the victim, but I'm not also gonna mm -hmm. confess, I'm just I'm just gonna deal with it. Like what what happens? Because I'd rather not do my work, I'd rather not try to live again. What happens to that person? You know, if they just said, I'm just gonna maintain my inflexibility, I'm just gonna maintain my numbness. What what what's the alternative? The the the, the alter well if they decide that's how they're going to yeah, live just then they, they you know it's so sad Hadi it's like uh, you just named how um, most of the world lives mm -hmm. I mean we we you you yeah. literally just said mm -hmm. well there it is for the person who wants to do like that w w that is the most common reaction to life I'll do whatever I got to do to make sure life doesn't affect me yeah. so amazingly when that person gets buried. The people who, if there are any at the funeral, they come and the closest they have to grief is grieving for who they never knew. But see, you and I want to live in a way when, when, when we're laid in the ground, we're not going to know. But we, we would love for people to come grieve a loss of who they knew. Mm -hmm. Because if, if we're not known, others suffer. Yeah. I mean, it's a responsibility to become known in heart. Yeah, and I think yeah. we have been such, you know, characterized by that yeah. you know I was you know in, in Atlanta there's this thing called the martyr and it's basically our train station and I remember for I'm, I'm a good church planner so yeah. as a good church planner at some point you got to take the urban you know yeah. the, the 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 trails and so anyway I'm on the smarter bus or the martyr train and you know what's interesting is that as I'm there during the times it's really crowded and all of the things that's going on and it's just like so interesting that the goal is for no one to talk to anyone. Like yeah. all these people on the bus, we're reading this sign and this sign again and over and over again, like things are changing. And I just recognized that there was a term that kind of came to me at that time. It was like, this is a picture of the church. This is a picture of how we live. This is crowded loneliness. Yes. There's a whole bunch of people around, mm -hmm. but there's such loneliness. Yes. And I think that that type of impact is how so many of us is just like, instead of being known, instead of seeking intimacy, instead of risking, we just kind of like, we'll put people around, but we're still so isolated and, and so lonely. You get nothing from it except the pretending that something happened. Yeah. And maybe tomorrow will be different. We'll go do it the same. When a person has trauma, they are ashamed of having insight. They're ashamed of vulnerability of being human. And either they harm themselves by shaming themselves or they become shameless and act out on other people. Mm. But people are suffering physical, mental ailments, relational ailments directly related to the inability to say, I hurt 
I'm sad. I'm lonely. Can you see me? Yeah. And, and, that, and instead, we, we, you said crowded loneliness was a great expression. Yeah. yeah. This is all about going back to being human. It's all about feeling your feelings, telling the truth to the right people, and giving yourself back to the process of how you were born to be. It really is. It's yeah. hard work, too. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for giving your life to this. Oh, man. And, you know, and I think what God is doing is going to be able, what you're, through your life and through your passion, God is going to use you and the books that you have written as tools to helping people to experience the man, same thank freedom. Thank you. Thanks to Hottie. Thank you. Glad I met you. <laughs>